Thank you for inviting me here. And I'm actually not a very good speaker in front of a formal audience, but I'm pretty much fine with my students in the class. So anyway, um, I have brought my script. I have to read through this, unfortunately, but I cannot uh, memorize things, but I used to. So anyway, um, the topic is today is uh, I'm going to focus on a, a reflection of equanimity, modernity, and existence through photographs. So as you know, I'm a photographer and a visual artist. So let's see this picture. And I took this picture recently, just uh, three days ago, I think. So I was in a hospital in an operation theater, and I took this picture, and I had the opportunity to take the picture of this. So this is how life comes on earth. Isn't it interesting? And do we really know who we are? Why we are here on Earth or in this universe? Our knowledge is collective. And in fact, it is derived from our ancestors. Do we call our ancestors primitive? They are our building blocks, more specifically, the foundation or basis of our knowledge. Without their contributions to our knowledge, we wouldn't be able to build a today's world. If we consider ourselves as modern or ultra-modern, or adhere ourselves to performatism or whatever, it doesn't mean that we have to avoid our social equilibrium and social bonding in order to keep the social well-being. All these things are philosophical terminologies developed in the course of time by humans. However, I'm not a philosopher, I'm a photographer, and I'm a visual journalist, but I have observed life very closely through my eyes, and even my extended eyes, what I call my cameras, imagination, and thoughts. I witnessed many things from destruction of humanity to beautiful flower gardens. I have seen the reality of the world, and I know very well of how primitive we are even in the so-called ultra-modern, technologically-assisted world. It is, because of our, it is because of our destructive thoughts, cruel activities, and greedy instinct to our natural world. So this is the picture I have made for Amazon on fire. So you know what happened to the Amazon forest. And the next picture is, so, you were seeing a forest in the morning. The name of the picture is the first light. So see how beautiful the forest life is. Do you think this is primitive? So are we modern actually, are we are primitive? It depends, we have to think about it very critically, anyway. So social scientists are very aware of the change of human behavior due to the advancement of technology. Technology is a place that helps us generate anything faster than before. According to an article from Zephoria Digital Marketing published in January 2020, 
Facebook users upload approximately 300 million photos each day. It is a new method of communication with others, and we have the power to change the things. Technology indeed changed the way of thinking, the way of seeing, and the way of believing. It is a kind of made easy for the contemporary people. So this is Times Square in NYC, New York City. It's a collage image of Times Square. So this is the modern life, and New York City is the capital of the world. And you know how busy they are, and how they are moving faster than in any other countries in the world. And they are so highly technologically assisted people, and they are technologically advanced. Okay, so we are now in a world where we can easily empower ourselves, something which wasn't possible in the past. Equanimity teaches us to balance the life with the pace of modernity. Modernity doesn't mean that we have to be alone or we have to destroy our environment to become more modern. Modernity is a process to become more human with empathy, not only for other human beings, but also for the ecology. It would be wiser to say that modernism and environment are not the substitutes, rather complementary. So this is a picture, collage picture, photographs. So you see the contrast between the industrial part and the flower garden of Chile. Well, being a photographer, I had the chance to get closure to unprivileged people there is a huge misconception about photographs on reflecting disadvantaged people, but it is the only few people who do visit them and talk to them on their condition of life. And we only experience their pain, agony, and struggle with life. It is we who showcase them to the world so that people can understand what is going on there. Many people watch them through their TVs, computer monitor, and through mobile screen from a comfort zone. They really don't visit those people. Many people accuse photographers for selling the poverty porn. But we photographers are not those kinds of species who drive expensive cars or live in a very distant apartments. We are journalists. We record the course of time. No matter what it is, we unfold the truth of the society and we don't intend to hide anything. Some people are allergic to the truth and deny the harsh reality and love to live in a comfort space and drink purified water, whereas according to the World Health Organization's report in 2019, one in three people globally don't have access to the clean and, and safe drinking water. Well, let me share an experience on how I try to bring a little happiness on the life of others. As you know, Bangladesh is one of the scapegoats of climate change. The coastal parts of Bangladesh are expected to be submerged by or after 2050. Many small islands in the Bay of Bengal will be vanished due to the effect of climate change. After the cyclone Ayla had hit the coastal
area, Gabura Island, washed out. It was Hajara Khatun who witnessed many cyclones and hence she was traumatized. She was taken to a cyclone sh shelter by her son at the time of cy Cyclone Ada. Her family later lived on the water and rebuilt their house using leaves stripped from the forest. I took her photograph, though you were seeing her sitting Excuse me. Her family later lived on the water and rebuilt their house using leaves stripped from the forest. I took her photograph, though you were seeing her sitting in front of her house. She worked all day long to rebuild this house. One year later, I revisited the place and found her in a tea shop. I asked, aren't you Hajar Khatun? She replied, yes, with an astonishing eye, wondering how I knew her. I said that I had taken her photograph the previous year. Then she told me about her physical condition. She added that she required an operation and she did not have the money to do so. I visited her home where she lived with her two sons. They did not have any permanent job. One of her sons used to have a rickshaw van which had been taken away by the flood. I talked to a local NGO and gave them money to have her operation done. I bought a rickshaw van for her son so he could run the family. Let's see some of the pictures I took as a visual evidence of climate crisis around the coastal belt of Bangladesh. Anyone knows what she's doing there? Anyone has got any idea about what she's doing there? She's digging to find out the left of, our, of a tree, the roots so that she, she can use it as a fuel. There is no fuel at all. So life is too hard for them. Life is not easy. They are not modern like Western countries are like even us. There is still primitive and human and it's all right, I think. There is no shame on that. And this picture, they are honey collectors. They go to the Shundarban forest to collect the honey. Due to the climate change, many people lost their jobs. And those people, many of them actually moved to Taka and Nyeri cities. And many were trying to go to collect the forest resources from Sundarbans. And it's gonna be a risk for them because there are tigers. They become victim of the tigers. So it's a critical condition of climate change around the, around the coastal area, in fact. Okay, during the political clash in Bangladesh, while there was a tradition of setting fire on public transports, I was covering the issue and I regularly visited a hospital where the barn survivors were being treated. Let's have a look at the pictures first.
and most of the people died. The next day, I found them dead. Okay, so do you think are we modern? If we are modern, how is this possible for us to become so barbaric? We are diminishing our forest, our greeneries by making empty environmental policies and ruining the mother earth that provides our refuge. Consume less, less is more on the other way around. Hyperconsumption is not a good idea for a sustainable world. We have to save the resource for the next generations and even for the other species that exist in the ecosystem and make the world livable for us. For example, bees are one of the important creatures that play a vital role behind the existence of mankind. Without bees, pollen transfer would be really tough. And if the number of bees gets reduced drastically, the world might experience several famines. Whatever the capitalist or socialist movements we go through, one must not forget the fundamental moral and ethical qualities to become a good human being, which is caring for others and for the environment as well. If we want to live on Earth, we have to depend on ecological system. To have a sustainable, healthy platform for our lives we must spread the love. Only love can save the world. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you.